Are you full? Sorry. Uh, okay, I'll hold this. Right. You are. I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. So you're the head of Toys head for Bob. Toys for Bob. All right. So how long have you, uh, you created this company for? Is this the first game that's being published? Toys for Bob's been around 22 years. Um, it's one of the older studios in existence, and I've been making games for over 30 years. Uh, video games and role playing games. And Skylanders is sort of the culmination of all of our loves coming together in one, one big app. So for people that don't know, what are some games that you have created that are household games? Um, well, let's see. We've worked on a number of licensed products, the Madagascar games, 102 Dalmatians, then just going back in time, the Pandemonium games for the PlayStation, uh, Star Control 1 and 2, which are science fiction games. Hey, hey Star Control fans. Uh, and then before that, Archon and uh, Mail Order Monsters and World War Golf for Electronic Arts. And before that, in 1980, uh, Keys of Acheron, which was one of the very earliest role playing games. So, how does it feel now to move into a brand that you adopted from, you got the license for, compared to some originals that you have done? Besides, you have done some licensing with Madagascar and Dalmatians, but Spyro is more a game that's been around for 10 years. How does it feel to adopt that? And do you feel that there was a weight on the company to live up to some type of hype or expectation that would be met? Absolutely. I mean, the original Spyro game set the standard at the time, not only for kids' games, but for action games in general. They are games that we had looked to years ago during 102 Dalmatians. And so we have this history of excellence and people loving the Spyro character. And at the same time, we were also told, don't just make a new Spyro game, make a new kind of game. So that's where the action is. So we took it into our imaginations to try to find a way to use the world of Spyro and Spyro, and yet to invent this experience that really didn't exist before, except in kids' imaginations. I think every kid believes that the toy is alive and when they're playing with it or when they're remembering it. So it was our goal to actually make that happen. So that you would take a toy, you have an imaginary relationship with it, you and the toy enter the video game together, and now you see the character in your imagination in the world, and you're playing together, and then when you leave, you both actually have memories. Yours in your head, and then the toy has memories of your experience as well. And I think that's a real
How do you feel when you talk about having a memory going in and that boy has memory, the person has memory? Now, how do you feel about the progression of technology with new tech like uh, the PlayStation Move and the uh, Xbox Connect? How do you feel that moving towards past the first Skylander, going towards, let's say, the future, would you say that you would think about implementing a more type of interactive, virtual type of experience with the user? inside the game and in the real world. I mean, we're trying very much to create the reality of um, your toy characters being your friends and your protectors and them having the existence in the real world with you and then together going into the imaginary world of the video game. And there, thankfully, technology is advancing so fast that it allows, allows us to run that one. Okay, thankfully, technology is evolving so fast.